So since I uh, won't be watching TV at all for the next several months, I moved the end table and the light over here so that I can read on the couch. In the daytime, if I, I can actually open up the, the shade and read by the, by the, you know, by the actual sunlight. Um, but now while I'm still sleeping on the couch, I can, you know, read at night by the actual light. So further proof of how I was always, always, when it came to my mother, damn, it was always a case of me, damn, damned if I did, damned if I didn't, you know, it, it was always damned if you do, damned if you don't, when it came to me dealing with my mentally ill mother. Further proof of that is what I told you about how I had people around me, including Auntie, saying, you know, my mom belongs in a nursing home. The idea of that made me ill. I didn't know how much longer, you know, my mom would would not be in a home or whatever, so our mutual friend wanted to, you know, meet her. Obviously, come here before it's too late. My mom and I were supposed to go there. That would have been a huge deal. Especially figuring out what to do with Omar and whatnot. So instead we had her come here. It wound up being a regrettable decision, but again, my heart was in the right place, you know. My friend knew via me and knew via talking to my mom. My mom, you know, wasn't doing well. My friend thought she could handle it, and she was wrong. But anyway, the case with my mom, I told you, my friend flew here and asked my mom, you know, we're going out Saturday night, can we please just stay in tonight, Friday, I'm tired, I just, I just flew for hours, I, I want to relax, can't we just watch a movie, and, and I'll cook dinner, and whatnot, and of course my mom said no, and my mom said, I, I said, you, I told my friend, i like, we were at the grocery store, and I'm like, you could, you could try, but I can guarantee you, she's, not going to agree to it. She's selfish and she's, you know, her illness is causing her to be, and, and my friend's like, you were right. She said, if we don't go out, she'll go out by herself. And you could sit there and say, well, first of all, you should not be going out with your mentally ill. Yeah, I know. I'm just horrible, horrible, you know. <sighs> People who say that are ignorant. They don't understand my mom could do what she wants. She wanted to travel really far via public transportation by herself to visit her friend in a in a nursing home. I had to insist on going, but again, I insist on doing these things with my mom or staying with her at the mall because I don't and she's she can turn around and tell hospital staff when she winds up hospitalized or tell her friends or whatnot. She treats me like a baby. So I can't fucking win. You know? I went with her and I cannot imagine her going by herself. 
I can't imagine if she had gone by herself. I told you just on the friggin' train, you know, memories from when I used to work, you know, but, but just on the fr friggin' train, it was wall-to-wall -wall packed people, nobody offered my elderly mother a seat, and we were all cramped in like sardines standing up, and I told my mom, hold on tight, but just instinctively, just like you, you, a mother would do with a, a child, a young child, I had my hand on her back, thank God, because, I mean, we were packed in like, like sardines, but not so much sardines that she wouldn't have fallen, and I told her, don't let go, whatever you do, and what does she do? The moment the train lurches to go, she lets go, she, and, and I held her up, and I, she would have gone flying down, and, um, and there was room enough for that to have happened, and she looked at me, and she's like, she's like, you saved me. She said it just like that. You saved me, Laura. Yeah. And I saved your life when you would have gone into kidney failure and, and probably died from that lithium toxicity thing. But do, do you or anyone else appreciate that? No. Of course not. You go into these hospitals and tell them that you'd be fine if, it, if not for me. It's just sick. It's all sick. But anyway... That night, we went out, because my mom insisted, and my mom said, you could say, well, you don't know, you could have called her bluff, you could have not gone out, you could have, you know, yeah, you're right, could have not gone out, and even if my mom couldn't find a way to go out by herself as she was insisting she was going to do, okay, because remember, she's 70 plus years old and thinks she's friggin' whatever age, okay, Remember how she insisted on wearing one of my mini skirts, and me and my friend at least talked her out of that particular one and into a slightly more respectable short black mini skirt I, of mine. Anyway, you're right. Could have just called a bluff and not gone, and you know what would have happened? She would have made us miserable, whining, and this said, "Wait, why couldn't we go out? You said we were gonna. I know what would have happened." So, my friend and I, we just gave in and we went out and it wound up being a oh, total fucking disaster. I knew ahead of time I wasn't going to like the band that was playing. You know, I already knew that. The whole night was geared toward being cursed. My mom insisted, like I said, on wearing her sneakers without the lacings, which is instant indication you've come from a mental hospital. Everyone knows that, according to my friend, you know. And, um, and insisted on wearing one of my mini skirts, which was still ultra short. And as I told you in another video, when I wouldn't get up and dance with her because I didn't like the music, she was dancing beside the table provocatively. But remember when my friend and I first walked in the door, and we saw her standing there in the in my blue and white mini skirt that I don't even wear out in public. I wore, bought it just to wear in videos, and 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 she had went in my room, which she had no right to do. And and I'm like, what are you? She's like, and then the first things out of her mouth, if you can wear a mini skirt, I can wear a mini skirt. Yeah, I know, mom. When you're sick, your jealousy, long, long time jealousy of me comes out as well. I'm only pointing this out again to tell you that how, no matter what I do, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. Because people who are just, they'd be like, well, what'd you go out with her that night for anyway? What are you taking your mentally ill mother out for? What do you even have your friend come here? Why do you have your mutual friend, you know, oh, fuck you. You know, seriously, fuck you. Maybe I wanted a break. Maybe I was hoping to have a little fun. Didn't happen, of course. Never does. I actually did have fun the night I went with the neighbor woman. That was the same day I was 
you know, regrettably had read Auntie's text or whatnot, and Glad I did read them. So I found out what was going on. If I hadn't even read it, I wouldn't even have known what was going on. In the end, it didn't matter because I took the money immediately, but then I gave it back, so really didn't make much of a difference. Except that I was able to talk to people and to tell you guys the truth that everyone around me except for Joe was telling me, you know, keep the friggin' money. Because they look at the whole situation They don't look at it, oh, well, that's your mom's money. And they look at the whole situation, including the fact that the mother who loved me would, would want me to have that money. It makes no difference. It's not taken, she makes, gets plenty every month. She has that 401k, so. It makes no difference whatsoever whether or not she had that extra money, but it would make a huge difference in my life. That is why people, everyone I knew except for Joe was saying, take the money. And I told you, Joe's as moral as they come, so he's like, you don't want to do that, even though, it, you know, it'll, even if you're not doing anything illegal, it'll have bad spirit attached to it. Everyone else was telling me to take it. Not that everyone else adds up to a lot of people, because well, I don't have people in my life. But Selena was saying to take it, and I was crying. To, this was prior to me finding out what Auntie had done behind my back. I was crying to Selena, you know, but Joe's opinion really matters to me, and he's, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then, of course, the woman down the street, the one, you know, that's more like a, a mother figure, was the other one is one I could actually, you know, um, could go out with. And, you know, I have her cell phone number now, and I keep in touch with her, even though she's far, far away from here now. But anyway, the one down the street was like, you got to do what you got to do. No, nothing about that's wrong or immoral or whatnot. She's the one that was been t was telling me, you, she could see what it was doing to me dealing with my mom 24-7. She witnessed things firsthand as well. And she was like, so it wasn't just hearsay. And she went, and she's like, it's not fair to you or your mom, Laura. You've got to get the ball rolling. You've got to get your mom put somewhere and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you know, you're going to be dead before she is and all this crap she was saying to me. I was, you know, her friend, but again, it's not a friend friend, you know, it's more like a mother figure type thing. There she adores Omar too. Anyway, I was with her before I was friends with these other people down the other way, so... They were, she, and she, they were saying the same thing. She was saying the same thing, you know. That woman, I would take the money, take it. I would in a heartbeat. It's like, I would clean, if, if, if you know, if my husband and I got divorced, whatever, I'd clean out the joint account, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera.
when I found out what Auntie had done behind my back and how it was conspired with the damn hospital doctor and social work, the same ones who discharged my mom too soon, and that elder services were involved, and I know it was the hospital staff that called them because there was nobody in the outside world. There was nothing, no incident that would have prompted anyone to call out services, and I know that for a fact. So all of that, when I found out all of that, then I was like, yeah, there's no fucking way I'm going to keep that money. I'm not going to give it back. And the guy says, you're crazy. Why are you going to do that? You're going to be left with nothing. I know. At least on top of everything else, Auntie can't go around and, and accuse me of stealing my mom's money. You know, telling everyone I stole my mom's money. Make me out to be even more of a scumbag than she already does. That's why I gave back the fucking money. Despite everyone around me telling me to keep it. They deserved it. Of course, they also recognize what is the truth is that my mom doesn't even need it. And that the mom who loved me would have wanted me to have it in a heartbeat. She did. It, uh. she had told me I could have half the money in the bank, plus five from the 401k for Omar's cataract surgery. So since I wasn't able to access the 401k, 5,000, no, then you take more from the money in the bank. Like I said before, I don't regret giving it back. It's blood money. Blood money, and that it, it just represents me not having a mother anymore, you know? It's just, that's what people don't understand who kick me figuratively for not taking it. Even when I explain it to them, they don't understand. That's because they're not me. Do value Joe's opinion of me, and he doesn't. He told me not to take the money. Of course, like I said, he'd also be the first to tell me to fight my aunt. You know. not to get guardianship and not even to take it away from her, so to speak, but to at least stand up for myself and, and you know, make an affidavit or whatnot. Otherwise, according to Joe, I'm accepting this and agreeing with it, which is couldn't be farther from the truth. I have tons and tons and tons and tons of videos that attest to that fact. It's about 1.30. I'm going to go to bed.
But yeah, I brought the light over here. I don't need it over there. That was only for when, you know, if you're sitting eating and watching TV or something. The chair. Yeah, I have no regrets about not taking that money. That I'm in a state of shock over all of this. And the way I'm making it through each day is I just am, I'm numb. I'm just like, I can't believe any of this has happened, so I just don't think about it. Because you guys saw the end result. And some, when I think about it too much, and some in some videos are still on private, and when I think about it too much and, and get so upset and so angry, you know, so I just don't think about it. Or it's there, it's just, it's called disassociation in some ways, you know, it's not really happening. I'm not going to be able to grieve or accept any of this until I'm out of this fucking nightmare. It's in out of this place. My mom's living caregiver for four years. And now this place is just a fucking nightmare to me being here. Good night.